of invaders, not the original Egyptians. This is probably one of the most common arguments, and it also makes the most sense. Much of the people of the Mena region are Muslim, speak Arabic, and look pretty similar to outsiders, so it makes sense that it was probably an Arab demographic that wiped out the indigenous population of Africa and replaced them, or, or whatever. But, not what happened, and here's some reasons why. For one, the Arabs came in 641 AD, and do you know the population of the Arabs that first came? Four to six thousand. It's true that the Arabs invaded later, but when people say Arabs, what they generally mean is Middle East, since we're talking about race. And if you want to talk about when did the Middle East move into Egypt and take over, we have to deal with the Hyksos, the Libyans, the Assyrians, and the Persians. When these people took over, did they only bring 6,000 people as well? This is the demographic change that will be ignored throughout this entire video. The population of Egypt during that time was 6 to 10 million. Hi, Editing Meta here. Uh, tons and tons of more Arabs would come to Egypt throughout time. But the thing that you're going to see as a trend with this is that no population can really compete with how numerous the Egyptians were. Now this is where the argument gets strange and starts to ignore biology. Well, it is true that there are 6 million people in Egypt at this time. Let us think of one way that a population can overwhelm another. It's called having kids. Sure, you can talk about how many came from the Middle East, but what about the kids they had once they got there and with the local population? And already, when we're talking about the 6 million people in Egypt, we're not talking about the truly native Egyptians. The Greeks and Romans had already taken over. Very good counter-argument. So let's talk about the indigenous people of Egypt. Believe it or not, but that was ancient Egyptian. But it's now called Coptic and it is spoken in the churches of Egypt. This is a bold-faced lie. Saying that the Coptics are native to Egypt is like saying the Mestizo are native to the Americas. They were mixed with Europeans, both the Mestizo and the Coptics. And this is admitted if you look at these pictures. But forget the pictures, just think about it. They speak two different languages fused into one. If you look up Greek Egyptians on the internet, it will be pretty obvious to you that the Coptics came from this Greek branch. So here's the Greek. So let's read it together. It is estimated that as much as 30% of the population of Fayum was Greek during the Ptolemaic period, with the rest being native Egyptians. The Fayum mummy portraits reflect the complex synthesis of predominant Egyptian culture and that of the elite Greek minority in Fayum. By the Roman period, much of the Greek population of Fayum was made up of either Hellenized Egyptians or people of mixed Egyptian Greek origins. And by the time of the Roman Emperor Caracalla in the 2nd century AD, ethnic Egyptians would be distinguished from Egyptian Greeks by their speech. Egyptian Greek is a variety of Greek spoken in Egypt from antiquity in, until the Islamic conquest of Egypt in the 7th century. Egyptian Greek adopted many loanwords from Coptic Egyptian. There was a great deal of intra-community bilingual in Egypt. And so the Coptic people of Egypt are actually a great freeze frame of what Egyptians looked like before the Arab conquest. And they look the same as Muslim Egyptians. Current Egyptians are a mix of all the people that have colonized Egypt. Yep, and I have no interest in debating anyone who says differently. What civilization do you know that can exist for well over 5,000 years between the biggest crossroads of all of humanity of Africa and the Middle East and Europe and not be mixed? But, wait for it. What's your point? 
This is a good question. What is the point of looking into the history of people and finding out that they live in a crossroads where they could have multiple genetic swaps from different areas only to look at their modern people and realize that they don't have as much genetic variation as we would expect? The point is, no matter how far back in Egypt you go, it has to start with a black civilization. That is obvious. But then Muslims or Arabs or Middle Easterners move in. At no point was Egypt unoccupied. And so when the first people from the Middle East moved in, they must have fused with the black people. But as you're about to see, he's about to make the point that one group of Egyptians were not mixed with black people. Watch this. If your point is, well, the current Egyptians are mixed, so that means that the old demographic must have been black or darker. Okay, here's the counterpoint. Based on DNA tests, which I do hate using, the current population of Egypt actually has substantially more Central African DNA in them than they originally did because of the slave trade. The genetic test he's referring to is one that was done in 2017 in an area close to Fayoum. Yes, that Fayoum, the one I was talking about earlier where most people, 30%, were Greek and the others were quote-unquote native population. Of course, considering the fact that many natives had already been conquered by then and mixed with, it would be ridiculous to say that they were 100% native, especially in an area where it's easy for foreigners to get porch. But if you look at the study, it makes it obvious that the people are not mixed with black Africans. And so his claim that this is an area where people are just mixing all over is falling flat on its face. And again, this is strange because even in his assessment, you would expect some African DNA of which they find very little or none. But here's the kicker. The DNA samples are from 1,386 BC to about 300 BC. The ancients of Egypt start about 5,000 BC in terms of defining themselves as Egyptians. That's quite the gap. And to mention the final point, uh, they started off with over 100 samples and they had to cut them down to 40 because of contamination. And then they had to cut them down to three. So there's only three samples that have been tested fully and meet this criteria. Three samples. And they're defining the entire ancient Egyptian population by these three samples from one particular area, which is known to harbor foreigners the greek historian herodotus wrote that the egyptians were black skin with woolly hair like the ethiopians yep he for sure said that mm. what well, said that about egyptians that they were black with curly hair because that's what they are egypt is not just cairo and alexandria there's a whole lot of other people in egypt like people from side who are lower and have darker skin curly hair mm. But the historically annoying thing about people who quote Herodotus and say, oh, he saw the ancient Egyptians said they were black. Guys, he saw them in the 5th century BC, meaning Egypt had already been conquered five times by the Hyksos, by the Assyrians, by the Nubians, by the Libyans, and by the Persians. And he still identified them as black. I'm just saying it doesn't make any sense. Like some of you will say, oh, the Hyksos erased the original Egyptians, and then say, see, Herodotus saw the original Egyptians. Herodotus came a thousand years after the Hyksos had already came and gone. This is a very sneaky tactic, and if you are very slow, you'll fall for it. No one says that the Hyksos erased the Egyptians. We're saying that the Hyksos mixed with the Egyptians, and so the population would not be as pure, especially in those regions like the Fayum. 
Now, what would make us believe Herodotus when he describes this? Well, it's also because he describes the Ethiopians. So he has context. He separates people who have been Hellenized or mixed with any other population. And so he has context to separate the different people since he was there at the time. If your claim is that the Ethiopians look exactly like the Egyptians today, that is so stupid. And it would have been obvious to the ancients as well. Not to mention that he separated the way that Ethiopians looked to the Libyans, who are the direct neighbors of the Egyptians. And guess what? He mentions the Garamantes, and he can clearly see the difference between the Garamantes, which were black, and the Libyan natives, who are, in his own words, white. The Nubian people are the true Egyptians. Ah, this one is 10 out of 10 cringe. Nubian people are their own ethnicity, similar to the Beja people, similar to the Siwa people, similar to the Bedouin people. There's a lot of different ethnicities in Egypt, and they're all Egyptian nationally, but they're all different ethnicities. They have different cultures, histories, and they deserve to be seen in that way. Again, he is mixing up nationalism and ethnicity with what people are talking about, which is race. When they say the Nubians are the original, they mean that the people who are genetically similar to them would have been the original um, Egyptians. And of course, there's tons of evidence that proves this. For example, the Nakada period, which shows uh, culturally similarities between these two areas. According to historians and scientists, they cannot separate the Nubian Nakada period with the uh, ancient Egyptian period of the same time. The only cringe is not knowing that. Sphinx and many other Egyptian monuments were blown off to hide their African features. I actually used to believe this one too. Uh, the story goes that when Napoleon came with the French in 1798, they saw the Sphinx with his distinctly African features and African nose and blew it off to hide the fact that ancient Egypt was black. This one is not true and it's very easy to show how. For the matter is a lot of noses are missing because of erosion and because when a statue falls over, it breaks their nose first because it falls on their face. Now. There's two claims here that need to be debunked. The first one is that the best argument is that they blew off the noses. The best argument for saying that the Sphinx looked Nubian is that the people who saw it first claim that. Here's an Egyptologist describing it. Um, anyway, this is of course um, supported by his, um, his glorious drawing, um, which we see here on the right. Um, not far off from there, of, of the pyramids, he says, and the Colossus doth stand unto the mouth consisting of the natural rock, as if for the purpose, for such a purpose advanced by nature. The rest of huge flat stones laid thereupon, wrought altogether into the form of an Ethiopian woman. By a sphinx, and he's talking about the great sphinx here, the Egyptians in their hieroglyphics presented an harlot, having an amiable and alluring face, but with all the tyranny and rapacity of a lion, exercised over the poor, heartbroken, and voluntarily perishing lover. Um, so he captured for his audience back home the fact that there was this colossal statue of a sphinx, human-headed, with a lion's body, although most of it was buried in his day. And um, he was mistaken in thinking that this was an Ethiopian woman. Of course, we now believe that um, the human head has the form of the fourth dynasty king, Caius Ra, but nonetheless, it's a, an amusing little tale that he tells here. Um, Sands and others... The second point is that if a statue falls, then it will break its nose or something like that. So what about Nefertiti? Her statue was found face first in the floor, yet it still got its paint, it still got its nose, and it looks pristine. Kingdom of Egypt was black, but later kingdoms were not. Uh, this is a very niche claim, and at this point it's like, what are we doing? If you want, I can spend time showing you these artifacts from the Old Kingdom that are very much uh, consistent with how Egyptians look today. And yes, of course, some of you might say, well, see, they were painted over. Oh, see, they changed them. Or, oh, these are faked or whatever. But it's like, okay, at what, at what point do you uh, agree with artifacts and not agree with them? Like, it's like, it sounds like... 
this is another good question. At what point do we agree with artifacts and at what point do we not agree with artifacts? This is very simple to solve. Let us look at the two people that he has put on the screen and let us see if they do not correspond to black people and if they correspond more with Egyptians today, as he says. Keep in mind, the Egyptians today are, according to the genetic test that he showed, 8% more African than some other study of Egyptians, the 2017 study. So they could have different features than what Middle Easterners tend to have. Even though Nubians were considered darker than the Egyptians, clearly they look identical to the Egyptians. Nubia has always While Europeans and Asians look very different from the Egyptians. Look, look, take a look. Now the reason I kept putting up this picture that shows different words on the African map is to show that the African language of Egyptian is the same as Afro-Asiatic and Sub-Saharan African languages. Take a look at this. The points that were being attacked in this, I'll call it movie, is low-hanging fruit. It does not even attempt to attack the scholarship. Sure, when we look at certain Egyptians, they look more Middle Eastern than other people. But what about the fact that Afro-Asiatic seems to branch from Africa and then move into Asia? What about the fact that certain words that are Afro-Asiatic, like Libyan word Aman that I have on the screen, which means water, corresponds better with Amanzi, which is a sub-Saharan word, which, by the way, encompasses the entire region that I highlighted, whereas they say that the word Aman is closer to Ma, which is the Egyptian version of it. Which one do you think looks closer, Ma or Aman? So there's Aman, which was used in Libya and those areas, Libya, North Africa, and the Sudan, which they say it's a coincidence that the Sudan has a word that means water that is like this. But then it's also a coincidence that um, sub-Saharan Africa and Bantu language has the exact same thing. And then there's words like Ra, which means sun, and La, -ga, which means sun in the Bantu languages. Just hundreds of words that you could use that correspond from Bantu, from the Nubian language, and the Afro-Asiatic languages to prove that there is a continuity, which will never be used in any of these videos because you'd have to take a long time to study it.